What do you care about? I care about the big problems facing my generation and hers. I care about protecting our planet from climate change and our rivers from single-use plastics. So there's a world worth growing up in. Don't want to end up like him. I care about everyone getting an education because we wouldn't be here today without a scholarship. I care about treating and preventing cancer like the cancer we lost beautiful Laura to. I care about young people's mental health. Because no one should have to face anxiety or depression alone. And I care about families fleeing war and violence. 
So here at the University of Birmingham, we are taking action on these five big challenges. But we need you. You can help our trees to help us all breathe easier. You can help take action on cancer to find the right treatment for every patient. You can help find treatments for anxiety and depression. You can help communities support refugee families. And you can support essential scholarships and share your expertise as a mentor. So young people like me can go to university. And me. And, and me. me. And me. So tell us which matters the most to you. It's time to take action for our generation and the next. I attended the IEP Summer School in 2017 now and it was the best week ever. I remember Ansar telling us at the beginning of the week that it was going to be the best five days and it really was. I met some people on that summer school that I ended up being best friends with for until now to this day. The ambassadors that have come on to be at university with me, we're really, really close. I had a mentor at the AEP Summer School and me and her now are still really close as well. But overall, it's just made me a much well-rounded person and just looking back on those days now on graduation day, I can't believe how long ago it was. Hi guys, my name is Neve Wilson and I'm on AEP this week. I'm on the humanities stream wanting to study psychology at Birmingham. Um, so I'm going to be doing vlogs throughout the week, so hope you enjoy it. We can do it and we're on this program for that particular reason and if it wasn't for many of the people in this room we wouldn't have been given that opportunity. And so I'd like to thank every single one of you for giving all of us young people the chance to reach our potential and even further if we want to, if we want to put the work in, we can do it. On A-Level Results Day, I was ecstatic. I remember going to sixth form instead of looking on UCAS in the morning, so I didn't want to know if I got in or not. I wanted to get my results first. I remember opening the envelope with my dad, who's here on campus with me today, and it was just like that thank you moment of just all the hard work and all the all-nighters and everything paying off finally. So that was an amazing day. It's A-Level Results Day and I've just collected my results. I got the grades that I needed to get into Birmingham, so I'm so excited to be starting my psychology degree in October. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to thank all the sponsors that supported the summer school that I attended last year, as it was such an amazing experience and I met some lifelong friends there. And I just want to thank you all for your support in enabling students like me to be able to attend Birmingham. The bursary actually enabled me to be able to uh, travel from here back to Bromsgrove and from Bromsgrove to here as often as I needed to in first year, uh, which was kind of essential because it was around the time at the same time that my mum was ill with the stroke. And so I was also like needed quite a lot at home. It enabled me to be able to take her shopping and take her out and do all the things that maybe my dad was struggling to do, trying to run a business and a household and stuff. So that bursary enabled me to just be there when I was needed to, whenever it was Whenever, what time it was, it didn't matter. So that was really amazing. It was my uh, first week in a sixth form, my brand new sixth form that I just started. And my mum unfortunately suffered a stroke. And you kind of learn from quite a young age that the world doesn't stop just because something bad happens. You know, it carries on. And that's where, you know, the A to B programme kind of levels the playing field. It's just bringing us back up to where we would have been if life would have given us the same opportunities as everybody else. Being able to have um, the freedom that the scholarship gave me when I started uni, I was able to move into halls and I was very aware that 
I was going to struggle because I knew that my mum needed my support in that time. But I also really wanted to have the experience to get into uni and get in, in halls and meeting new people. And so having that scholarship gave me the ability to get like a, an annual train pass to back the force to Bromsgrove. So it really gave me that opportunity to just be there when I needed to. So I've been a part of the mentor scheme this past year at uni and uh, my mentor Paul, unfortunately we haven't been able to meet up in person due to Covid but we've been able to have Zoom sessions every other Friday and it's given me that structure that I've really needed this year due to having online lectures it's kind of been that one thing in my diary that's stays the same. It's been life coaching, it's been career talks, it's been giving me self-confidence when I've been feeling a little bit down in the dumps. It's just been that thing that's really like pulled it all together and made me crack on over the weekend that coming after it. It's just been perfect. So I couldn't thank him enough. It's been absolutely amazing. I would say a massive thank you to all of the alumni that have supported students like me. Without the scheme, I definitely wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be stood here in my robes graduating. You know, I've made myself really proud and I've put in the hard work, but it's with the support of the alumni that's enabled me to do that. So just a massive thank you, really.
gives me the greatest of pleasure to declare this congregation open. Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the university, family members, friends, and especially graduates, a very warm welcome to all of you on this wonderful occasion, one of the first degree congregations we have been able to hold in this most magnificent of settings since 2019. A big welcome also to those of you who are unable to join us in person and are watching on our live stream around the world. Graduands, today you graduate from a university with a long and proud story. It's a story founded on the vision of Joseph Chamberlain in 1900 to provide a university for the people of Birmingham, a great school of universal instruction, taking all knowledge in its province. We were the first university to incorporate a business school, then the Faculty of Commerce, and now one with a growing reputation for its focus on responsible business, surely one of the most important issues of the 21st century. We are also graduating today the first students from our new MSc in Mental Health, the only interdisciplinary taught master's degree in mental health in the UK and linked to our new Institute for Mental Health. Huge congratulations on your success in this most vital of areas. In fact, this is a university that has always sought to teach, to test, to extend, and to apply knowledge in the broadest range of disciplines, a breadth illustrated throughout this very building. Outside, the friezes beneath the domes depict engineering, metallurgy, and music. And behind me, the spectacular south window portrays commerce, that's some of you, as well as the medicine, as well as medicine, the arts, physics, and more. This great hall has a remarkable story. When it was opened in 1909 by King, King Edward VII, it was described as the greatest glory in this, the original civic red brick university. Its story encompasses not only 100 years of examinations, graduations, and prestigious functions, but also serves as a military hospital during the First World War, as an, as an emergency gym in the second, and most recently as a COVID testing facility. The global pandemic has impacted all of our lives in ways that we could never have imagined two years ago. Graduands, you have adapted, persevered, and shown more resilience, ingenuity, and tenacity than any graduating cohort this hall has seen. We are proud that you've overcome all of the challenges to achieve your degree. In a world that is experiencing one of the most profound economic and business as well as health disruptions of a generation, all of your skills and expertise will be very much in demand. And you can make that contribution because you are extraordinary people. That's why we're here today to celebrate your achievements. You studied at the University of Birmingham because you wanted to come to a great place of learning to test yourself, to equip yourselves for the next phase of your life. Your experience will not have been what you were expecting, but you stand here today having overcome all barriers and having achieved your goals nonetheless. Graduation day is a day to tell stories, the individual stories of each of you, the students of all ages, backgrounds, and nationalities that animate this great university. Behind each of the names that we read out today is an individual chapter written into the history of the university. This ceremony marks a momentous occasion and a significant chapter in your stories. It's a chapter, though, that has also been made possible through the continued support and tireless dedication of all those who join you in the Great Hall today, as well as others spread around the world. That's why we're delighted to welcome family and friends, parents, partners, and children to celebrate this important moment in your lives. The best things are always achieved together, 
even if the final push was yours alone. Today marks the end of one kind of relationship with the university and the start of a new one. Today you become members of a distinguished family, a family with over 350,000 members in more than 170 countries around the world, the alumni of the University of Birmingham. Our alumni engage in an astonishing array of projects and professions, and we look forward to witnessing your own professional achievements and successes being added to the list in the years to come. And do stay in touch and tell us what you are up to, whether you're in Birmingham, Beijing, or California. In a world that is increasingly fragmented, you can be part of the glue that binds us together. You and those who are with you have many reasons to be proud today. We share in that pride and take great pleasure as the Chancellor will now admit you to your degrees. Thank you. Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present the names of these graduates as listed in my program, both in attendance and in absentia, proved worthy to be admitted to their respective degrees. By virtue of my authority as uh, conferring officer, I admit those persons listed in the program to the degree to which they are to be presented. In the College of Social Sciences, Birmingham Business School, for the Doctorate of Philosophy for Research into Immigration and Crime, Gianluca Bortoletto. For research into the economic consequences of inaccurate financial expectations, Wei Jin. <laughs> the Master of Science, Development Economics, Emily Jean Newport. <laughs> the Master of Science in Economics, Kyle Ambris. Gemma Louise Atherley. My apologies, Gemma Teresa Atherley. Alexander Kassar. Jani Ding. George Robert Edwards. <laughs> Gongju Lu. <laughs> Stephen Lin Cook. <laughs> Thomas Powell. Gurtaj Singh. <laughs> Benjamin James Stocks. <laughs> Xin Wang. <laughs> ya Wang. Miki Yamane. For the MSc in Financial Economics, Wija Ma. Lucibilo Bartholomew Mathugungo.
Majid Ali Alalyani. Anwar Awad A. Athol Ghafi. Mohammed Ali, Mohammed Ahmed Al Zayudi. Similia Lua Eniola Ayadeli. Sahaj Dosanj. Taran Singh Gill. Greta Caracas. Kiprianos Constantinou. Pei Shin Lai. Yuan Zhang Lin. Yuvraj Odedra. Beth Pierce. Bhagava Kuma Thamala. Ka Ding Yip. For International Accounting and Finance, Daniel Boromand. Rahuljith Jagajith. Dilakshan Kabithel. Jinyan Uyang. William Owusu Ansa. Kiran Patel. Mohammed Zahid Sultan. Jing Wen. Ying Chu Yao. Xin Li Zhao. For international money and banking, Xu Li Hua Zhang. For investments, Roshan Shahal. Benjamin John Cordingly. Ajay Damrate. Samuel Francis. Jihahwe Li. Yijia Li. Menglan Liu. Harrison Plum. Purna Sai Vikyath Popperi.
Ling Xu Ran. Sandeep Sandramuli. Yadi Zhang. Jingying Xu. For Money, Banking and Finance, Anika Arij. Jawaria Azmat. Zilin Wei. Jin Song Xu. For Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Finance, Tarandeep Danda. Sukjinda Hare. Saif Rahman. Iklas Hussein Shahi. Praveenan Sivakuramaran. Heather Lucy Smith. BSc in Economics, Tala Ahmed. Archie Anderson. Rosio Natalia Liano Rivas. Pupinga Singh Raj. Samuel Woodward. For BSc Economics and Political Science, Yadi Nasare Bakheji. For BSc Mathematical Economics and Statistics, Naeem Ahmed. Luca Batuzzi. For the College of Life and Environmental Sciences, School of Psychology, Doctors of Philosophy. For research into the neuropsychopharmacology of eating, Elizabeth Marie Schneider. For research into brain activity resulting from visual stimuli that can induce migraine, Austin Joseph Tempesta. For the doctorate in clinical psychology. For research into shame-related beliefs and psychosis, Sophie Allen. For research into how group interventions shape foster carers' parenting and their relationship with their foster child, Lucy Louise Basil. For research into anxiety and social cognition, Henry Briscoe.
for research into resilience of students who have experienced childhood trauma, Rachel Margaret Eliza James. For research into the experience of looking after a parent with dementia, Devon Louise Perfect. For research into adolescent panic disorder, Hannah Playstead. For research into the social experiences of young people with cystic fibrosis, Jessica Rose Seddon. For research into the impact of anxiety on empathy, Manjeet Kaur Sush. For research into the impact of social contact on recovery from alcohol problems, Thomas Watson. For the doctorate in forensic psychology practice. For research into the personality traits of street gang members, Katie Louise Minette. For research into the reliability of child witness memory evidence, Catherine Ellery Williams. For the forensic clinical psychology doctorate. For research into forensic mental health services, staff perceptions, Sophia Barford. For research into relationships of people with Huntington's disease and their relatives, Vincent Jonathan Harding. For research into the experiences of ethnic minority homosexual men, Edward Adlington Howard. For research into stigma and discrimination in individuals with mental health difficulties and offending histories, Erica Izawa. For research into long stay service users within forensic mental health services, Rachel Grace Oakley. For research into managing closeness and conflict, Megan Alice Wright. For the Master of Science, Brain Imaging and Cognitive Neuroscience, Jared Duran. Dasha Lathia. Rupali Mukesh Limachia. <laughs> Gurley Purity Naika. <laughs> Lucy Rose Jane Palmer. <laughs> Lias Saleh. Anthony Stanworth. For computational neuroscience and cognitive robotics, Poppy Aves. Aaron Chauhan. Oliver Graham Cope. David Emery. <laughs> Rachel Grace Fletcher. <laughs> Taylor Healy. <laughs> Magdalena Jurovitz. Ellen Geshwaran Kanabaran.
Alexandis Krivikis. Manavi Kumar. Tracy Hotton Rochester. Margarita Saranti. Taranjit Kaur Sembi. For the first cohort graduating with the M in the MSc in Mental Health, Bill Alexander. Kirsty Marie Ambrose. Brooklyn Ashdown Dole. Hannah Azam. Emily Beasley. Tamelo Tyra Bogatsu. Camilla Anita Florence Carr. Chloe Elizabeth Clifford. Lauren Alice Dixon. Melissa Dwyer. Alexis Jaber. Rebecca Kimber. Antonella Maziotta. Beatrice E.D. Morris. Suhanya Navaratnam. Christina Priest. Hassoun Saeed. Rebecca Scone. Tin Wai Diva Wong. An Yu Zheng. <clears throat> the MSc in Psychology, Robin Francesca Bosworth. Georgia May Harris. <laughs> Eleanor Reed. <laughs> Ellen Rogers. For Master of Science in Psychology and Psychological Practice, Thomas James Hewson. For Bachelor of Science, Human Neuroscience with Year Abroad, Beatrice Howes. For Bachelor of Science Psychology, Najma Abdi. Lee Darby. <laughs> Serafina de Rougemont. <laughs> Kimberly O. Yun Fu. <laughs> Zara Hussein.
Daniela Andreas Musikos. Rebecca Elizabeth North. Svenja Peters. Ala Wanis. Bethan Williams. <clears throat> For the Master of Science in Economics, Jamal Amin Gondal. <laughs> Jacob Chris Hassan. <laughs> Trishna Rajiv Naik. <laughs> Yufei Wu. For the MSc in Financial Management, Shamari Mills Legerton. <laughs> Pravin Naik. <laughs> Shuan Khan. <laughs> Meru Shi. For International Accounting and Finance, Langkang Wang. <laughs> Wenyan Zhang. <laughs> Jiawei Zhang. <laughs> Ruiyu Xu. For investments, Ali Ahmed Ibrahim. For money, banking and finance, Yanwen Chen. For Bachelor of Science Economics, Hamza Yusuf. For Bachelor of Science, Money, Banking and Finance, Omar Orisanya. For the MSc Mental Health, Helena Christine Smith. For the BSc in Psychology, Laurie White. For the Doctorate in Forensic Psychology Practice, for research into child witnesses in the UK, Catherine Amy Roussel. I would now like to introduce our student representative, Benjamin Stocks. Oh, there's a lot of you. Firstly, congratulations. We have succeeded in something truly great. We have graduated from challenging courses and conducted intense research, and we have done it in the most uncertain of times. The only certainty throughout this has been your unwavering determination. There have been times over the last two years where I'm sure we have all questioned why we are pushing ourselves quite so hard in such a time when we could just take it a bit slower. But we didn't stop. We went above and beyond the call of 2020 and 2021 when we could have just not. We bettered ourselves through the pandemic. But we couldn't have done this in isolation, even if some of us were physically isolated. Though we may not have met each other in person until today, 
We have made friendships and bonds that have helped us through. We have used these friendships to ensure that we are all heading in the right direction. We made sure we could bounce ideas off each other, and when people were at their worst, there was always someone there who was willing to offer their help, even if that wasn't necessarily academic. Whilst we've all improved our education, we've all grown as people. So, <sighs> Some of us have developed new interests. I know a lot of people uh, on the economics course suddenly took an interest in bashing Arsenal. That was a good bonding experience. But we couldn't have gone through what we have without the guidance and support of the academic team. They've worked tirelessly through evolving circumstances. They've learned how to use Zoom. They've learned how to adapt to Zoom when not many people would talk. But there's one person in particular that I would like to single out. I don't know if he's here today, but Sasha, uh, he's a lecturer for economics doing econometrics. He mostly focuses on PhD students and has been teaching the master's students for the, the first time, I believe, this year in quite a while. He went out of his way to support projects that he didn't need to. He helped us when there was no need for him to do so. So I want him to know that we're really proud of him and every other lecturer just like him, because they've all gone out of their way to help us this year. There are many other lecturers like Sasha that have gone out of their way to help this group of people succeed, and I want them to know that we are truly grateful. I'm immensely proud of all of you, and I hope you are too. Thank you. You started this uh, ceremony. Now you've graduated. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and wow, what graduates you are. You are graduates unique in history when history looks back at this time. And it's been an extraordinary achievement through the most difficult times, and you've done it through your hard work, which there's no shortcut to. But you could not have done it on your own. You've achieved what you've achieved today, thanks to your efforts, but also the support of all your family and friends here. And if you feel proud, I can assure you, having seen my older son graduate, your family feels even prouder of you. So I think we need to thank your family, but also your amazing faculty and staff. Without your brilliant teachers, you would not have been able to do what you've done. So I would like the graduates to stand and applaud your family and your friends and your staff. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Please be seated. And, and, and Thanks so much to our student speaker, Benjamin Stocks. Benjamin, I think he did a great job, so I think Benjamin deserves a huge round of applause as well. And he spoke about determination. Thank you also to Professor Richard Black, uh, who heads this whole school of, um, that you've all graduated from, 
Uh, so many thanks. Now, it's a privilege for me to congratulate you as your chancellor. You're leaving with a degree that will be of huge value. Uh, we consistently rank as one of the top universities in this country. We're a Russell Group University. We're consistently in the top 100 in the world. We're one of the largest universities in the country. We're a very secure university. The wonderful facilities that you've all benefited from, that we all benefit from, over one billion pounds has been invested in the tenure of our retiring Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir David Eastwood, one billion pounds in the last 12 and a half years, and it's so visible through the amazing, if you haven't show your family and friends around, boast about the beautiful library, the sports center, the heart of the campus, and all the amazing new facilities uh, that we have. So, so be, be proud of, of, of graduating from one of the top universities in the world. And if you haven't already got a job, you will get a job because we always rank highest in employability. So the skills that you've learned, I mean, they're very amazing, specific skills that you've learned and the degrees that we've seen today. They will be extremely valuable, but they are also skills that are completely transferable. You may decide as an economist to carry on being an economist, or as an accountant to be an accountant, or if you've specialized in mental health, the first ever mental health graduates in this course ever, ever have graduated right now. We've witnessed history being made. So these skills will be very, very useful for you. Um, the other skills you've learned about tenacity and resilience and perseverance, um, and of course, the challenges that you have experienced in this surreal environment with remote learning, it's been a challenge, but we've adapted very quickly. I remember one of my roles as I'm president of the Confederation of British Industry, the largest uh, preeminent business organization in this country, and Satya Nadella, the chief executive of Microsoft in May last year, two months into the pandemic, said that we as a world have adapted and adopted technology in two months that would have taken well over two years to do. And we've done it. It's been amazing. We've been resilient. One of the professors who taught me at Harvard Business School, uh, Professor John Quelch, sent me something right as the pandemic started in March. And he said, these are the seas of getting through uh, a crisis. And he said, you've got to be calm. You've got to have compassion. You've got to have community, communication, confidence, collaboration, and cash. And you know, the government has been amazing in this country, 400 billion pounds worth of support to save our businesses and save jobs by any stretch of any imagination, by any comparison anywhere in the world. That's one of the highest in per capita or in absolute terms. Of course, the pandemic has been tragic. Every one of us, sadly, know somebody who has passed away because of this pandemic. So, you know, we've had to experience this awful, awful time, and you've graduated through all this. Now, by becoming a graduate of the University of Birmingham, you join a distinguished group. I mean, if every time I walk down the corridor to the Vice Chancellor's office, there are the pictures of the 11 Nobel Prize winners from this university. In the Olympics, our sports center, phenomenal sports center, the Princess Anne Open, we get gold medals of students who are in the Olympics who are students at the university who win gold medals. Successful entrepreneurs. Um, I could give you an example, example of those. It's phenomenal. But the good thing is that um, when you leave, you actually never leave because you're always part of this family. Please come back. Uh, I always say it's a bit like you know, Hotel California. You can check out any time you want, but you can never leave. And it is real. You are forever members of the University of Birmingham family. Now, if you were graduating from an American university, 
Um, I remember as soon as I became an alumnus of Harvard Business School, the next day I received an email asking me for money. We're not as blunt as that here, but do give. <laughs> do put back. When the time comes, and the time will come, because you will all be successful, remember that we are benefiting from benefaction. Old Joe, our tower, named after Joseph Chamberlain, a great entrepreneur, a great politician, um, the benefaction, the ground given by the Calthorpe family, hundreds of acres of the most beautiful land in the most beautiful part of Birmingham, all thanks to benefaction. So 120 years later, we benefit from it. Uh, and we've got our Birmingham in Action program, which offers life-changing opportunities uh, to, to volunteer, to put back. So it's not just about money. Come back, mentor, teach, volunteer, and engage with your university. So wherever you are in the world, there are only one or two countries in the whole world that do not have a Birmingham uh, alumna or alumnus in that country. 300,000 around the world, you've joined that community. So motto, you all walked across this motto, and you know, school mottos, university mottos, we all just, who, who, who even thinks about them? Well, it's real. It says per adua ad alta, which means through effort to high things. So be proud, look ahead, and it's my duty as chancellor to give you some advice before you walk out of here. And here's advice for you. The true test of leadership is not in the good times, it's in times of adversity. And you have had that test in the time that you've been here studying. I founded my own business, which I chair and run to this day, Cobra Beer, three decades ago. And as an entrepreneur, there's one word that sums up entrepreneurs more than any other word, guts. You've got to have guts to do it. Lots of people have ideas. How many of them actually give up whatever opportunity they have or the job that they have and go out and set up their own business and take that risk? That takes guts. But more importantly, you need the guts to stick with it when others would give up. And you've had to stick with it when others would give up. You've been through hell. We've been through hell. The world's been through hell. And as Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. And we've kept going, and you're here you are, you've graduated. Be proud of your university. It's a British university. British universities are the best in the world, along with American universities. We're the highest ranked universities in the world, by far. There are more world leaders educated at British universities, along with American universities, than any other countries in the world, by miles. Many of you here, by the way, today graduated as doctors with PhDs. I think they deserve a huge round of applause. So to our doctors. We are 1% of the world's population in this country. We produce 16% of the world's leading research papers. Many of the students here who graduate today like me, I came over from India as an international student. Today, I chair the All Party Parliamentary Group for International Students in Parliament, and I'm president of UKISA, the UK Council of International Student Affairs, looking after all the interests of all 560,000 international students in this country. Thank you, international students, for what you do, not only because of the over 30 billion pounds you bring into our economy, which we're very grateful for, but most importantly, for enriching our universities and enriching our lives you bring so much to us and for being lifelong ambassadors forever on from now. My mother graduated from this university. My grandfather graduated from this university. My uncle did his PhD from this university. I'm a third generation to be educated in Britain. And now my children are being educated at British universities. Thank you to the international students. A huge round of applause to them. And finally, Let's look forward now. I chair the Memorial Gates in London, which commemorates the service and the sacrifice of the five million volunteers who served in the First and Second World Wars from South Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean, and the huge sacrifice they made 
to give us the freedom that we have today. And Ben Okri, the award-winning author, has an inscription on the gates that says, our future is greater than our past. So let's look ahead to our future. And my favorite quote of Mahatma Gandhi's is this, believe in yourselves, believe in yourselves, because your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits form your character, and your character will determine your destiny. Congratulations, all the very best. Thank you very much. I now declare this congregation closed.